Hey, so this episode we're going to be talking about faster than light travel in the Mass Effect video game series. Um, but if you haven't watched my FTL basics video, I would recommend that you would watch that um, just because I'm going to reference some different types of technologies that you may not be familiar with. But if you don't care, then you don't care and let's go. So um, first off, first that we think about when we talk about travel in Mass Effect are mass relays. Um, what are they? How do they work? Uh, well, if you remember when you're playing the original trilogy, um, when you go to jump from a mass relay to another position, you have a map that's pointed out. It goes in a specific track. And that's because these mass relays, what they're doing is they're acting like wormholes. Um, so they're purely a point to point travel system. These are primary mass relays. Um, they do mention secondary mass relays as well in the codex. And um, as far as I can tell, the way that they work is more like a jump drive system in the sense that you have to say, okay, I wanna go there. Um, but the cool thing is, is that they are limited in distance, which makes sense. Because if we're talking about um, point to point jumps, it requires a ton of energy to force through a jump that we haven't seen yet. And so uh, we want to make sure that we limit how far we can go because that's going to take a lot more energy in order to do that. So we have primary mass relays, which act like wormholes. We have secondary mass relays, which we don't see much, but those are acting more like jump drives. Um, and then the other way that you travel faster than light is in the Normandy. And the ships actually have FTL drives. Uh, what they're doing is they're using ESO to manipulate the space time. So it's building a warp bubble around your ship, around the Normandy, in order to propel yourself faster than light. And uh, this makes sense, right? Because we do visit the soul system in Mass Effect. And uh, you zip around our own solar system. Now, if you were really zipping around our own solar system, uh, it would take a very long time. The sun is eight light minutes from us. So even if you're traveling at the speed of light, it would take eight minutes just to crawl to Earth, which would be boring. So they do have some FTL capabilities. And like I've talked about in the past, they assign rules to their FTL technology, which is pretty cool. Like, I super appreciate this. And uh, one of the rules that they have is that as your ship is traveling faster than the speed of light, um, it builds up a static charge in this warp bubble. And you need to discharge that charge when you uh, at specific stations as you're traveling around. So this is a rule that they implemented uh, in the Mass Effect universe as part of their FTL technology, which is awesome. Um, like I said, you know, lots of shows, sci-fi, things that deal with FTL commonly do this. And, uh, but there was one aspect that I actually really like, and that's when they go to Andromeda. So in the new video game, um, they had to explain how they were gonna get to Andromeda, and there's no, um, there's no discharge stations along the way. There aren't mass relays from the Milky Way to Andromeda. Um, now, if you remember, I've talked before about our cosmological address. So we have our Milky Way and then the Andromeda galaxy, both big spiral galaxies, and they're about two and a half million light years away. Now, um, in order to travel there, they have to travel at FTL because they don't want to travel for two and a half million years. And they implement the FTL drive systems that have been used in Mass Effect. But like I said, there's a problem with these discharge stations. And it's kind of cool, actually. It's what they came up with. So they didn't just retcon all their technology. They actually explained it away by using this Odyssey drive that was developed. And the whole point of it was that you didn't need a discharge station. The way that the Odyssey drive works is as you're traveling faster than light, you're building up this static charge and the Odyssey drive harnesses that static charge and repowers the ship with it, which is pretty cool. And I totally appreciate that. Um, now, they say the journey took 600 years. So of course me, I hear that and I'm like, okay, two and a half million light years away. It takes you 600 years to get there. How fast is your FTL? And so just some quick math. That's what I do. Um, I found that if you were to go that speed in our solar system, whatever that FTL speed is, we assume it's one fixed speed. If you were to take that speed with the Normandy in our solar system, you would get from the sun to earth in 0.1 of a second, 
which is fast, but it's not absurd. It's not like breaking quantum physics laws or anything by some being some absurdly small number. Um, it's 0.1 of a second. So I'm okay with that. We'll go with that. Another cool, fun thing to talk about when we talk about mass relays is in um, the Mass Effect lore, right? They talk about humans discovering that Sharon is a mass relay. And um, it's not. <laughs> when Mass Effect came out over 10 years ago, um, the best picture we had of Pluto or Sharon is this. So they're both dwarf planets. They're dwarf planets. Pluto and Sharon are companions. They're companion dwarf planets. And um, we only had crappy images of it because it was so far away and our telescopes that we had up there that could take really good pictures weren't designed for something within our own solar system. So we didn't have really good pictures of it. Um, but since then, New Horizons arrived at uh, Pluto and Sharon in 2014 and we were able to image it and it looks pretty cool. And it actually looks similar to uh, what they put in the codex for Sharon, which is great. But, and this is the cool part. So New Horizons got there. We realized it's not a mass relay. Um, sad face. We wish it was, but it's not. So, uh, however, um, there was a little, little spacecraft called the Dawn spacecraft that just arrived at uh, Ceres, which is another dwarf planet in our asteroid belt. And it's weird. Um, there's like weird luminescence going on with it. Um, you can see that here a little bit. Um, yeah, so super weird. And scientists are trying to figure out what those bright patches are because they're radiating light in a way that we don't totally understand. So there's a lot of studies being done. People are saying maybe it's like weird salt deposits. Um, maybe it's just some sort of ice luminescence that we're not familiar with. Um, for me, the answer is obvious. Uh, it's a mass relay. So, you know, obviously. Um, so get prepared for the first contact war um, and get ready to meet your space boyfriend. So <laughs> um, with that, uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.